Verbally Effective with Ina Esco is an interview style podcast that intersects art, culture, politics, and entertainment with a Memphis focus with producer Sana Marie. Each week, I'm joined by a featured guest with roots in Memphis. Verbally Effective delves into each guest's personal journey to uncover the incredible stories fueling their purpose, the highs and lows of their pursuits, and how through their passion, they are moving the culture forward. Be sure to follow Verbally Effective and Ina Esco on Instagram. Also, download the Verbally Effective podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Don't forget to check out the website and submit to be a guest at verballyeffective.com. Greetings, greetings, and welcome to another edition of the Verbally Effective podcast. I'm your host, your double E, Ina Esco. You guys could be anywhere in the world right now, but you are here with me, and I truly appreciate you guys. Now, let's get to some business before we get into my guest today. I need you guys to check out the website to get your merch. You know, fall is around the corner. I need you to get hooked up with them hoodies, them tees, them Henry masks. That's right. It's all on Ivy Multimedia Shop. Dot com. Also, check out the verballyeffective.com website. Catch up on some older episodes. We are surely approaching episode 200 before this year is over, right? Also, check out the YouTube channel, Ina Esco. That's E-N-A-E-S-C-O. Follow me on all social media platforms at Ina Esco, E-N-A-E-S-C-O. And I want to send a huge shout out to the Consortium MMT for allowing me to pod in this beautiful state-of-the-art studio big shout outs to my boy Brandon big shout out to Patrick my team for helping me each and every time we record however today I got one of my good friends with me I have known him for quite some time in this Memphis music industry one of the most creative hip-hop artists I'm gonna say artist I'm not even gonna put hip-hop on the front One of the most creative artists that I know. I am talking about Pro. What's up, Pro? How you doing, sweetheart? What you doing? How you doing? How we doing, y'all? How y'all doing? How we doing? doing? Now, you know me, Ina. I always got to do it the right way. I got to be proper. What's going on, y'all? My name is Pro, Mr. Malcolm, two X's, Handsome Samson, Dos Equis, two braid, two X's when they in there. But right now, we with Ina Esco, so we about to vibe. And then he got the hair down for me, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be. got the hair down Not Fabio, Fabi Pro. (laughs) Now, you know, I recently had you on my show, uh, radio show on WYXR, but I said I got to get you in for a more in-depth discussion about your journey. Definitely. So you here on Mm -hmm. the Verbally Effective Podcast. Let's start at the beginning, Pro. Where are you originally from? Well, I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, I lived there from about birth till about my fifth grade, so I said about 10 uh, I come from a, a military family. My mom was in the Navy. So about fifth grade, she got a job to uh, switch out from out here. So I moved to Memphis when I was in fifth grade. And that was kind of like, that's what changed everything for me. So it just mm-hmm. came from New Orleans to Memphis. And I've been here since. So what part of Memphis did you move from? When I you mo- first hit the scene? When I first hit the scene, I moved to Raleigh. I okay. moved to Raleigh. I went to Raleigh Barley Meadows, uh, like the elementary school right out there. I uh, walked to school. Man, it's just a lot of good times from like school fights, just mm-hmm. just a lot, just a lot of uh, learning, a lot of learning. But I will say, um, I, I, just to tie into everything, what the cool thing about like moving at it, moving to Memphis at that time, because at that time, like when fourth grade transitioned and fifth grade, that was like the in, in, in the music realm, the era was like the bling bling cash money era. Oh, that and, was the best so, era. So that then, was my college days. Exactly. <laughs> and then I moved to Memphis right when Project Pat Getty Green like Ooh. like came out. So like the Three Six Mafia sipping on some scissors. So time. I did a Euro step literally from New Orleans to Memphis and the music. I was just like, man, everything's just crazy right now. Were you soaking it all in? Oh yeah. At a young age. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, soaking it all in because it was new for me. Like I grew up in a household it was my mom and my uh, two sisters. I was a middle child. Mm-hmm. And the thing about music just was. I guess that freedom for me because my mom, a super religious like family, my older sister. 
shout out to her just being like alive and living because she was a lot more open to stuff. So she was like my broad spectrum to the world, like music from like R and B and stuff like that. But when I got to school, like Riley Barley Meadows, man, I'm hood ass kids, man. They turn me up, <laughs> like for real, like you know, from from school school fights, throwing bowls, mm-hmm. like doing everything. And that was like my real life experience, just understanding what like culture was like outside in the real world. Wow, yeah. I know they was juking in the gym. Oh yeah, juking. Oh, yeah. I'm you know I'm not even playing. Like, my first <laughs> school dance was in fifth grade. I won't forget uh-huh. this. And two kids went up to each other. They was like, man, I'm about to go dance with her, bro. I'm like, all right. So he went up to the girl. He was like, hey, you want to dance? She said, yeah. And they literally just started throwing bowls at each other in a no, circle. Oh, how they, romantic. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I get, all right, fifth grade. I'm like, they just don't, they just sitting there going buck jumping with and each he other. was like, wow. Yeah, I was like, hey, I think that's if that's how it is. Fifth oh, grade. Wow. So I'm thinking, okay. So Memphis. I didn't do, I didn't go up to a girl like that, but <laughs> that would have been my first experience. Wow. So, yeah. so Okay, only boy, two sisters. Mm-hmm. Um, what high school did you go to? I went to Bolton High School. Ooh, Bolton. 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 Yeah. Tell me about going to Bolton. Ooh, see, see, it's errors. It's errors. It's like, errors to Bolton? Yes, it's errors to Bolton. Explain. I didn't go. Right now, the era is like, you know, post-gentrification where, like, they pushing all the hood kids there. So all, I heard Bolton turned up. They wilding. But when I went, I went to Redneck. I remember country, Redneck Bolton. Yeah, like C- Cottonfield Bolton. Ooh. Bolton High School. I always say this. That school was a plantation. David Bolton. I remember I went to um some it's a, some African American History Museum in the city of Memphis mm-hmm. that just shows you like different historical facts. You saw Mr. Bolton on that. Yeah, it was like it, it was like he, his, his, his Bolton was a plantation. If you go to Bolton, Lord. like and there's a sign that says Bolton Plantation. It's a cotton field in the back. That's dude. Yeah, it was oh like so I'm God. like he turned. I know he's turning his head watching all black folks go to his school like so like that's what I went to I'm talking about uh, Dixie Confederate flag like rocking and y'all had to deal with that yeah but the, and, and the crazy thing was once again was it was crazy to me these like uh, Dixie outfitter wearing dudes you know, they pull up with the F-150s mm-hmm. mud on, on their shoes but they bumping Gotti they bumping Shut like the most trap up. like trap music ever and they like yeah man I love this shit man and I'm like what? Make it make sense. Yeah, right. Make it make sense. So I'm offended. You're like, man, you shouldn't be offended me wearing my dick shit. I know I'm confused. Like, because you want our culture, but you don't want us to be. So that was the whole dynamic I grew up in high school. That was but my high school. You saw it. You saw yeah. it from the jump. For sure, for sure. And yeah. a lot of those cats try to be fans now, and I call them out, and I make them feel mm-hmm. embarrassed. Ooh, because I got a lot of, like, PTSD, <laughs> a lot of angst from a lot of just moments. Yeah. And I, I just deal with that because I, 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 I never let that slide, never let those stuff go. And it's, I guess it's going on into my character because, I don't know, a lot, a lot of those moments was just pivotal for growing up for me, and I just can't let it go. But it made me who I am. I pray, I pray the best for you. whoop de woo You know what? Okay, still on Bolton right quick. Yeah. What was pro into? What, what activities were you involved in in high school? Fun fact, I was one of those kids, like, if you knew me, you knew me, but you didn't really just know me too much because, like I said, my mom was really – um. She was really a religious, and I had to watch my little sister. So I was one of those kids that just went to school. I only missed three days of high school. I'm a painter wow. like this. And I only missed three days three days of high school because I had to do something each year. Like, I missed one one day in ninth grade because my mom needed me to do something. One day in 10th grade because they went out of town. And one grade in 11th grade the same year. Other than that, I never missed a day of high school because mm-hmm. – that was my only way. I got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. I got to just do something. Like, um, So I, I really didn't do too much in school, but just go to school. And uh, when I went home, I just wrote raps. Really? I, and since I since I could not get out the house, I wrote to everything. Like, I, I it was them line wire days. I know y'all feel me. Yeah, them, line cause, wire. Because I, I ruined my, <laughs> ruined my folks computer. Them line yeah. wire, because our days, I downloaded every instrumental. I went from, I said, I, I want to download R&B instrumentals. Rap, rap instrumentals, like mm-hmm. pop instrumentals, because if I was gonna be, choose, if I wanted to write, I'm like, I never want somebody to tell me, bro, he can't, he can't rap to this. Oh, you can rap, you can't. I never wanted nobody to tell me that, because I always, I always, I already knew that I was kind of at a distance because I wasn't experienced and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I was just writing raps, and I remember like t- telling like from he's like, I want to be a rapper. Oh, this Nick Cannon adding. <laughs> I will, I will ever forget this check. So Bolton dude, Eddie. yeah, b- they said, <laughs> oh, you talking about Lupe Tabasco over there? Hey, <laughs> I'm never gonna forget that check. He called me Lupe Tabasco. I remember no. that from my life. And um, I just remember that was like, oh, man, man kick that, kick that sh- weak ass shit out. I remember all these times. But I was like, it's cool, it's whatever, because I just, I just know. Mm-hmm. So that's why I guess that goes into, I guess, not to jump ahead, my artistry. That's why I always wanted to be a, I feel like I can jump on anything and do just You've fine. You've been doing this 
a long time. Yeah, and I've been doing a long, long time. Long, wow. long time. And then you said, you know, you were really preparing yourself. You said you wanted to just be able to spit on whatever. Ever. Whatever, whatever. Whatever. Better than anybody. Like, I didn't want you to be like, oh, that's cool. No, I can do this better than you. I can do this better than you. What you want? Mm-hmm. Which way? Because I, I didn't want to be deniable. So I wanted, if you to deny me, you had to be on some hating shit. It had to. It's like, Mm-hmm. Uh, Hello, you right. <laughs> now I was pro with the girls. Oh, uh, uh, I was all. This was me, you know. See, uh-huh. I was. I had. I grew into my face. Like I didn't really luxurious, handsome Samson out until like my <laughs> college days. Like because I had a round face and I didn't reach up. My jawline didn't get, go go on to college. So and I had like a, I used to always work rock the Kanye like short haircut. I didn't grow my hair out till college. Really? And anybody who knows me, I didn't know my hair was like this until I started you got smoking. That good, good. I didn't know. My mom used to always cut your hair, keep it low. I told mm-hmm. you. So I always had to like the super low like Kanye cut. But the thing with the girls was I was always nice and I was a great listener. Mm. So I was a great listener. That's the key. Exactly. So I learned. <laughs> yeah, I two, grew up household full of women. All I had yeah. to do was listen. So um, I was the type of guy I, where I lacked in uh, handsomeness. I, I picked up in just uh, personality. My personality was fire. So I would just say, like, I was just one of those dudes who was, like, kind of quiet, kind of cool, but I always was like, yo, he be with a pretty, he, be, he stay with a pretty girl. Mm-hmm. But it, was, it wasn't like, I didn't really have that confidence yet. Mm-hmm. It was, it was mm-hmm. growing, it was growing. So. so how was your relationship with your dad? Uh, my relationship with my pops, my pops wasn't really in my life. Boo-hoo, sad story, black American dad story. But I will say um, more, my dad wasn't really in my life until more so recently, I'm not. I'm not gonna just like just throw him un, under the bus. But he really more so just yeah, just really wasn't there. I really don't know what to say. Yeah, mm-hmm. it wasn't there really. It was just my mom's, my stepdad, who was a uh, my stepdad is from Honduras. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, my stepdad is from Honduras, and uh, he's been my, been around my life most of my life, mm-hmm. and. He has a really thick accent, so when he talks to me, everybody else will be like, yo, you can speak Spanish? I'm like, no, he's talking English. You just really can't tell. Oh, it's just wow. a very deep accent. And I say, like, his influence on my life, to because it, we never really had, like, a, he never really was, like, a disciplinary guy. Mm-hmm. One of the nicest guys ever. But, like, he's, like, a, a man's man, like mm-hmm. Black Chuck Norris. Like, <laughs> one time, he, he, has, he has a story. I'm, I'm telling his story. It was one time, like, his boat crashed in the middle of the ocean. He, him and his best friend had to swim like 12 hours through like shark infested water. Oh he caught a 70 pound tuna. He punched a great white shark in the nose. I know I sound like I'm lying, but he's one of those type. If you give him a toothpick, he'll build a boat. He's one of those type of man's men. Yeah. And he, he, the nicest guy in the world. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, what he instilled into me was really just a hard work from like, you know, he t- I had to build fences, had to paint the houses, and just had to do like just a lot of like labor, hard work, stuff like yeah. that, but still was the nicest guy. So my, that's as far as like men in my life, mm-hmm. that's built like the biggest influence of hard work. That's amazing. Him, so. Amazing. Now, once you graduated from Bolton, mm-hmm. what was next for pro? What did you do? All right. So when I graduated from Bolton, um, I wanted to go to school, but I still wanted to do music. Um, and my mom was like, okay, she's not going for that. Like, my mom, I love my mom, but she just didn't see it. She didn't understand it. Go to school, typical mm-hmm. type type stuff. So I, my whole thing was, okay, I'm going to use college as a scapegoat to try to do music. And I didn't know. You know, I was one of those kids, I'm going to go to school, but I really don't know what I'm going there for. Mm-hmm. It's just what you was raised on. So I always wanted to go to University of Memphis, but my mom was like, we didn't have, like, the dope bread for it. And I was also dating this girl, but I honestly didn't think she w- wanted me to go to school because it was with the girl. But that's another story. <laughs> but um, I ended up going for my first uh, semester of college. I went to UT Martin. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just like, I hated my experience here because I was like, bro, you're not about to be a super rapper out of UT Martin. And mm-hmm. um, um, that my first experience is there, like, I learned so much. And that was the first time I was ever in a studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, that's what this guy was just moving. Because um, my first time was being in the studio, I met this guy named, like, Freddie Wycheck. And um, he was just like, yeah, I record out here. And I was just like, oh, there's a studio out here? I was like, yeah. And then, like, all, like, the... Um, the cool, like, uh, Kappas uh, and all the cool cool kids, they, they took a liking to me because they saw I was just a real dude. So they would say, oh, come to the studio with us. So I'm hi- happy to be hanging with them, but I'm really happy just to be in the studio. So um, everybody else recording, they smoking, they chilling. This is before I was doing all that. I was young lungs. So <laughs> they was just like, man, you want to step into the microphone? Yeah, I want to rap. Does he got a beat? I was like, yeah, I got a beat. And I, I ain't never going to forget this situation because I had this song, and it was like, they told me to rap. I never recorded ever in the studio. He pressed record, and it's a song called Trying to Find a Balance. I can still rap this junk uh, right now. 
The thing about, I rapped it, one take, Jake the Snake. First time in the studio. Everybody smoked down the studio, and I'm just impassioned rapping it, and I just kill it. One take. Give me a little bit. Um, um, uh, the whole bunch of sellouts. I wish I had the beat. It's really it's muscle memory, Ina, and I know rappers understand this. <laughs> I can't remember now if I heard the beat. It's like ping. Beat. It's gonna gotcha. change to me because I got limitless limitless flows. But if it comes back to me and we have time, I, I'll definitely do that okay. joint because I know I remember it. But nonetheless, after I rapped that joint, I was like, "Hey guys, you know, how did I do?" And everybody sitting there like, "Hey, bro, did you just freestyle?" He said, "No, it's a verse." I was like, "So you just did that whole joint?" It was literally three minutes of rapping straight. Mm-hmm. Like nonstop, and that was like my first time in the studio. And when I did that, I was just like, where I lacked in knowledge, I knew I had just in just mm-hmm. the I put in the work already. So that was like after um, college. I when you see Martin, I, I begged my mom. I was like, Mom, I hate it here. Don't they go to they hate, let me go to Memphis. They uh, they making my time horrible. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to get out. So she I was like, like Okay, Martin. fine. So I transferred <laughs> to University of Memphis. Um, when I transferred to University of Memphis, it was so that was I felt like that was my most challenging time because the girl I finally transferred there. Me and a girl broke up before I before I transferred. No. And like so I like broke up on Thanksgiving. Wow. She called me on Thanksgiving. She broke up with you? Yeah, yeah. She was mad at you? I don't know. But no, you know what it she, what, what it was? It was just like she had another team. Yeah. And it was just it was something new. It was just like I wasn't enough. So like yeah. so just Euro stepped me. And I was just like, you know, all heartbroken, whoop de woo, maybe for us, all love. And um once but once that situation happened, which and I'm I'm not even gonna put it out like that. I went perfect. So she 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 moved on. So um when that happened, I was like, I'm a university of Memphis. I really didn't have no homies there. Like I had one friend that went to the school, but he didn't live on campus. I lived on campus. And I people knew of me, like through that through her for that life situation. I was like, oh, that's that rap dude. They ain't transfer schools to be here with her. Damn, sorry. You oh. know, just like it was so I use all of this. I remember that and I was like yeah I'm a rap and I was like okay whatever and I had to go through the muck and my eyes like okay he want to be a rapper so I went to the school I did from I did uh Ebony Man pageants uh just to really? I did them joints just I posted to, a few of those yeah I, I did Ebony Man pageants just to get opportunity for me to rap I just did every opportunity any event just to show people I wanted to rap and I'm still doing my school stuff but I feel like shout out to like University of Memphis and like the homies and connections I made out of there because I feel like that kind of put me in a place to like yo yo this guy from Memphis is dope and I grew a really big female like audience like for real for real I catered like to the women I put out projects that was just like yo how these ladies feel about this because I learned early yo you gotta keep the women happy because these dudes gonna say whatever so I feel like that's what I guess started everything for me shout out to the U of M shout out to all those experiences so it has been a very long journey and it, it sounds like it's all been music 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 so let's fast forward to today, Pro. Mm-hmm. You got this new song out called Slide hey. that is just everywhere. The mm-hmm. visuals are amazing. Um, your team is amazing. Talk to me about this new record. How did you come up with it? And tell me about your situation now and okay. your team. Um, Slide. Uh, sh- produced by uh, the president of Unapologetic, uh, uh, Kid Maestro. Uh, create uh, the video directed by the birthday boy today about 35 miles um happy birthday yes happy birthday 35 miles and honestly like i guess i gotta tell you about my, my creation process mm-hmm. like anybody if you ever seen like that's so raven like you yes. know it's it's moments when she like when she's about to catch that flashback she does that face that's how i hear records like sometimes when somebody <laughs> sends me something i hear it and it's like an explosion goes off and i'm like I hear the whole thing. I hear the beat. I hear the uh, the ad libs. It's crazy. It's really crazy. And that's how I just hear the tune. So I I'm, I think I was like bullying Maestro. Like I'm like when I say bullying, I was just like messing with him. Like man, send me some president. I know you're doing all this president stuff. Send me some beats though. I want something from you. So I think it was my birthday. <laughs> um, my birthday. I'm t- I'm getting. I'm sipping off prosecco. I'm prosecco poppy. Mm-hmm. I'm chilling. I'm vibing. He was like, Yo, I got a beat for you, man. I think you might like it. And as soon as he sends me the beat, it's literally like. As soon as he is pressing play, I see everything. I hear the hook. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be a hit record, bro. He was like, are you sure? I'm like, just wait. And I just literally, it just came to me right there. And the thing what made it called Slide was, Ina, is I love the bunny hop. I love the bunny hop. I love the bunny hop. It's the greatest, <laughs> that's the greatest, like, uh, uh, step, dance step jump to me. So, like, I always, and I always look at that. I was like, man, I'm a, at my shows, I'm going to do the bunny hop. I always want to incorporate that at my shows. And I was like, why don't I make something that's like the bunny hop? And I see everybody going TikTok crazy with junts. And whenever I see, like, these old school videos, these temptations, they always hit the slide. Yes. Like, the slide is the coolest thing to do. From James Brown, you just want to hit it. And I was just like, 
I'm just going to do a dance where I incorporate that. And then I just thought about the concept slide. Like, I'm talking to my partner, Rudy. I'll be like, yo, uh, what up, bro? Yeah, I'm about to slide on you. Are you with, with a shawty? Like, hey, I'm about to slide on you, shawty. Or just sliding is such a, like, a term mm -hmm. that you could use for so much. And I was like, it's there. And it just came to me. And the whole, the idea of the song just came to me. And when I was talking to 35, I was like, yo, 35, I got a, a crazy idea for the video. And that's why I say I love my videographer, because I could give him crazy ideas. He just sees them and brings them to life. And yes, I feel like, yes, yes, yes. Because I see them played out on social media, and mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. Like, they thought of that. Like, yeah. they did that. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the Brody. But that's, yes. uh, yeah, that's how, uh, I guess, the whole concept of Slide came about. And um, I, I guess I'm going to lead that to just talk about me and my, my squad, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm apologetic, you know. Uh, we're a creative company uh, that just focuses on a, a creative, truly being a creative and knowing who you are and pushing that to the limit times a thousand percent, cranking that up. Mm -hmm. um, for, uh, it's full of videographers, engineers, performers, so sound people, uh, visual arts, and it, we're a collective of artists that really just truly believe in each other and, and move as a family. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been rocking uh, since 2015, but the family's been a family much longer than that. And uh, what we're doing for the city is really just bringing back to, the, not only to the community, to the community that looks like us, mm -hmm. to let you know what you, let you know your dreams and aspiration as an artist are very feasible for what you look like, even if you come from a, a bad neighborhood, a crazy neighborhood. And I, you want to say that to say that uh, what we're doing right now is uh, next year, I'm super excited about the Orange Mount Tower. Yes. Uh, that's super, super <laughs> excited about the Orange that's Mount major, Tower. That's major. I'm, I'm, major I'm, moves. Man, man. Uh, should I talk about that or should I? Should you I, should. Uh, Go ahead. So the Orange Mount Tower, um, right now we're building a community. Uh, in the Orange Mount, there's that old warehouse building that's been there for years, like mm -hmm. for the last 20, 25 years. Abandoned warehouse just been sitting in the sky. Nobody messing with it. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a op and honestly, it was gonna be a situation to where what we see so much in the city of just like um, places get taken over, but mm -hmm. they really don't they really don't look into the community. They just take over the community and push them out somewhere else. Gentrified, exactly, maybe. exactly. <laughs> so and this was an opportunity to where Orange Mound and Orange Mound is such a powerful community because mm -hmm. it's the first community uh, built by us yes. for us in in the country. So with that being said, it was an opportunity just for us to build into something that we really saw that was just really going to be impactful. It's going to be a creative just utopia mm -hmm. for, for artists to to create, uh, harvest, and believe. And you don't have to see it. It's not far-fetched no more. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, I want to say it's similar, similar to the feeling when you saw Barack Obama become president. Like, mm -hmm. it's possible, kids. And seeing what we're doing in this community is so and it's possible because we don't need nobody pushing us mm -hmm. out of anywhere, especially a community that powerful, that impactful, and that historic. Definitely. It's straight like that. And, and, and keeping it in Memphis. Yes. Like, you know, so many artists that I know, they leave Memphis. Mm -hmm. They 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 going. They going to Atlanta. They going to L.A. They're going on opposite coasts, mm -hmm. and they feel like they can't mm -hmm. thrive here in Memphis. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I'm glad. You, I'm so glad you said that, Ina. I've been guilty. I don't say I've been guilty. Um, I moved to Atlanta. I think like 2016 to 2017. Um, and I'm such a, I'm so Memphis based. I'm so, so Memphis. And it was more so me just trying to refigure things out because I had been in the city for like eight years. And I said, I just want to see something. Mm -hmm. So in my year you know, in, in Atlanta and I'm me from my plateau, I done done so much in the city and I feel like I'm, I'm well respected. So I know ins and outs and I know runarounds and I know finesse moves. So when I move to another city and I, I check out the landscape, I see what's going on with the music scene. I see what's going on with the arts. And I'm just like. In this day and age, you really don't need to move anywhere else because another city, uh, moving to another city, is really not helping you forward because the other city is building in their community. So it's like if you're coming from this place and trying to build in their community, like how do they know you to trust you to build it in like they, their sense of community? Yeah, if I'm making sense. So it's like yeah. you have to play like in my in my eyes, I say you have to play like politics. You have to like play different runarounds and play different games. I'm like, hey, family, like in my city, I already established myself and right. I see what's going on. So I'm just like, wait a minute, I don't have to do this. And anybody who's trying to make something happen, they really could make something happen from like their couch, from from their commute. Because okay. you don't have to do that no more. <laughs> this, this this time of era, like these people moving to L.A. and Atlanta, like salute if that if you have something that's truly going for you. But you really don't have to do that to be successful in like this day and age I've learned so in my little brief year I was there in Atlanta it was cool I made my connections but I definitely had to go back because there's nothing like building in your own mm -hmm. so that's that that's on a fine fine pride in where you truly care about or, or, or who you truly care for if it's a city if it's a community but build into that but no that community is gonna have to know it's coming from a genuine place okay and that takes time to build rapport 
It so, does. It definitely I, yeah. does. Wow. Now, not only are you this amazing musical artist, you get into the acting. You got some acting shops as well, right? Yeah, Tell yeah. Tell me about that. Talk to me, bro. Light, light acting shops. You slick shops. comedian, yeah, too, you know, I, I, What's I, I, going I'm, on? I am, I am an entertainer. What's I am going an entertainer. on? I would say it is. Um, <laughs> but my acting shops, honestly, it's something I always is truly interested in. I'm an entertainer. From the bottom of my heart, so I said, you know what? When the uh, when the pandemic, when the panini kicked off, I was just like, man, I still want to be able to create, even if I can't be at shows. So I said, I finally had the time to really step into a different bag. So I said, yeah, I want to create a show. I want to create a show that uh kind of like com- that kind of brings in all the crazy shenanigans I did go through at the University of Memphis because I found a, like a select group of friends I call these guys. And my wrist is tied to TG. I mean it's for TG. It's, it's for these guys, some of my closest homies, and um we we basically just had wild shenanigans. It's kind of like um. It's like uh like if 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 Seth Rogen had black homies and like we were stoners we had wild stories and I just wanted to compromise it in the show and I saw how the TV show Atlanta went down and I love what Donald Ooh, Glover did so and it and yes and it just gave me an idea of like all right how can I tell a story about like three black du- black stoner guys that go through crazy shenanigans so I created a show called with these guys mm-hmm. uh, with my homies and uh, we put it on and it was released through Unapologetic uh, I directed the show I acted in the show you know and I edited the show as well. I found Felt like Leonardo DiCaprio pro and Quentin Tarantino pro <laughs> at the same time. So it, it, with that, that was my first time uh, just stepping into the acting realm, and I really just felt like people saw a different light of me mm-hmm. because another uh, another piece of me, Ina, uh, it just goes into my resilience. Is that I didn't want to be looked at as a one trick pony because mm-hmm. I say I did music all these years, but I'm like. I don't want y'all to think it's it's more to me. It's more to me. It's more to me. So I feel like I'll just show you better than I can tell you. Because I I just don't feel like I I wanted the opportunities to act in bigger spaces. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like I haven't created a space for them to see me in that light. Mm -hmm. So this was an opportunity for me to do it for myself. And a lot lot of other opportunities have opened up since then. But I guess y'all going to have to see that. Because you're not sharing. Not right now. Oh, not right now. I got to keep it cool. Eyes. Okay. It's cool. Because yeah. I know you drop exclusives to me. Yeah, you, you know, I got ready. you. I got you. When you get ready. Now, you know, a lot of buzz is going on right now in music mm-hmm. because Kanye dropped. Drake dropped. Yeah. Have you listened to both? Yep. Okay. So, let's talk about Ye versus Drake. Which okay. one is your fave? Or can you can you even determine? Uh, I can't determine. I can't determine. Okay. Uh, I don't. I say. I say. Shout out, yeah. Shout out, Drake. I don't want to ruin my features if y'all see the interview ah! one day. <laughs> so I say. I'm from, What's I'm your a, favorite track on Ye's album? My favorite track on the Ye album. It's two. It's mm-hmm. two, and I and it's two, and I say why. Um, for me, um, the two um are off the grid, mm-hmm. and jail two. Um, off the grid. I'm a big fan of Five Year Foreign. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Five Year Foreign, and uh, it gets spiritual in me with verses. Like, I, 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 I'm not. I'm at that point towards just like just because somebody is lyrical, miracle, spiritual, and saying all this dope like lines, that's cool and all. But I like when it comes from a place that like feel like God talking through mm-hmm. you. Now, Five Year Foreign, I think he just did like a maybe four or five months maybe stint in uh, in jail, and um, I was just like when he when he went in, I was very just upset because I was like I was championing him. And, like, New York, like, rappers were coming out. And I know, like, when, rest in peace, when Pop Smoke went down, like, he was kind of carrying that flame. And I'm a big fan of, like, New York drill. So when he went down, I was like, man, all these other New York rappers are coming out. And you go to jail. I'm like, dang, five years. So I'm feeling like when you come back out, a lot of people don't sound the same or you ain't going to have the same energy. But, like, his off-the-grid verse, for me, like, how he, he brings a lot of his verse, you know, this brings it brings it back to God and like you know I know God stood me met me when I did that bid I know people that wrote me those letters he said man you ain't gonna tell me God don't exist mm. when 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 he moved with me I feel a hard mm. shiver I be like come on you bro feel it. Yeah, I'm sorry yeah yes, you, yeah you I, that, that's I say like I get chills that's that's yeah. what gets me because that's it's just like music, man. I, I don't care about like the lines mm-hmm. I I know you've been I don't know where you've been through but I know mm-hmm. you had to navigate through that and that's why I said his his verse was like three minutes straight they didn't even cut it it was just like mm-hmm. dang he just Going. Well, and that's why. Check that out on the way home again. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> my favorite joint. Off of that, uh, and no, and Jail Two. And honestly, the Jail Two joint. Um, it was the the baby verse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, it, no, it's crazy. It's crazy. Let me just say, it's crazy that Kanye West got a song with. Marilyn Manson and the baby on and one record. And the baby. And Every, the baby. Everyone was shocked with yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, we got Marilyn Manson saying on the record, uh, God gonna pay my bail tonight. 
What? <laughs> First time I seen Marilyn Manson. I was a, guy. Yeah, he had his he had his booty cheeks out at the, at the MTV Awards. Right. I was like so. And the, but the, the the baby verse for me, I'm, I'm gonna say this because I don't want to, of course, say nothing too wild. But like, um, for the baby, it, it was such a genuine verse because for him to go through or uh, him to put himself in a situation where all of like, like that slander and stuff happened. Mm -hmm. But I felt like that verse was just so personal to be like, you know, telling him a story that he came through. Of course, he's he apologetic for how he feels, but it, it was just something that's just once again so real. And I felt like he just let God speak through him, mm -hmm. and it's just like you know. Uh, as a, being part of a label called Unapologetic and knowing you make mm -hmm. mistakes and just for you to persevere and still, like, be able to speak like that, man, I don't, to me, it just it just says so much, man, because yeah. I've been through so much adversity. Mm -hmm. So that's why those type of verses, like, peak for me the most. So, yeah, I would have to say Jail too because of the baby verse and just the shockness of Marilyn Manson and yeah. that five year off the grid. And Drake. Yeah, yeah. Drake. I find myself listening to the Drake album Me more too. now. Maybe because it's so fresh and new, or what is what um, is it, Pro? Is it that? Or... <laughs> See, yeah. I was going to say, you know, this is what I'm, gonna say. I'm just going to say, I've been listening to it a lot more. Right, <laughs> right. What's your favorite track? Man, what's my, oh my God. And so playing. many, right? I've been playing. Like, I've been playing that joint. I was before I pulled up here. I was playing it. So mm. I would have to say, um, <laughs> right now, right now, um, it's pipe down. Uh, pipe down. Mm -hmm. I'ma turn it down for you to pipe down. Mm -hmm. That's oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's just, it's just uh, Drake just sometimes put the words it's together so and it just be, it, it just be smooth. Ooh. And it's just the whole the whole project is great. But I have to say, um, the, uh, pipe down. And right now, Yeba's heartbreak, you know? Oh, come on, now. Uh, girl. Yeah, but I mean, Yeba's... like, he, he got the home team yes. on there. And I've been just like, you know, sometimes you want to, you got to get, get in your mood with Drake. Mm -hmm. so he, that man be knowing the right time. So I'm like, ooh. But you sometimes know Sometimes it make you feel like you just freshly go through a heartbreak. Right. And you just want to like, feel that. He, he, he knows how to express himself mm -hmm. very well. Production is outstanding. Definitely. On definitely. On top of that. And you know what? Drake runs in these Memphis streets, mm -hmm. in these circles. Have you met Drake yet? I haven't met Drake, but I definitely have met Dennis. Uh, I've been I've hung around Dennis quite a few times back in the uh, back in the one fifty two days. Yeah, mm -hmm. I used to be around Dennis quite a few times. Mm -hmm. Just put some put some smoke in the air a few times. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, Dennis. Right. You know, you might get that phone call to come do a verse. Hey, you, you know never know. Saying? You know, you know, I know. You know, I'm always ready, and I, I yes. feel like you know, one person like Drake is super aware, so. Like, you know, the energy is out there. You know, I'm always with it. Like, for real, for real. Wow. So what can we expect next, Pro? Now, I know you got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So what's coming up for you? Well, right now, okay, what's next for me right now, Ian, um, is just, I have a new single that I'm, I'm super excited oh, cool. for. And I'm just having fun with how I'm rolling these joints out. Mm -hmm. So I just have just a new single. The roll is just going to be different just from all the last joints. And it's just like... It's just like fine wine. I feel like vino, and uh, it's just getting better. It's better. Um, I wish, I wish I could just go into it deeper. Ah, I, just I, can, say, I, I can feel some. that coming next. Yeah, I can like, feel mm. that coming it's next. Just a lot, but a it's lot coming because you guys put on a huge marketing campaign. You. you guys roll out is Thank just. You you know, on top of everything. Yeah. So I'm going to just watch and wait. Thank man. you. It's a, it's you know. a, like I said, we say at our squad, it's a season of revenge. Mm -hmm. And Ian and I've been, in a, uh, I feel like a young OG. I'm taking flowers. <laughs> I'm taking flowers. Y'all ain't got to give me nothing. Bag. I'm taking all my flowers. Yes. So I'm going to be, y'all might not see me today. Y'all might not see me tomorrow, but mm -hmm. I'm going to be here. You can't get rid of me. You can't stop the luxuriousness. You can't stop the fury. You can't stop my foundation. <laughs> my team is strong. I'm strong. I'm mm -hmm. God bodied. I'm blessed. Blessed. And every time you see my face, respect it because I'm going to be here. I love y'all to the end of time. And if you can't stand me, sorry, it is what it is. And you know what? That comes from the heart, I yes. can tell. And yes. I know that you've been through a lot of adversity. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're going to, you know, bring the conversation to a close. But I want you to kind of speak on some of that adversity that you've been through um, in this game in Memphis. What You know, talk to me about it. Well, I've been through... I've been through, I, I, I never, I never, I never, I never will blame nobody else. I always say it's on me. Mm -hmm. So just small situations I've been through. I've missed opportunities because of me uh, rapping in the studio. I think it was an opportunity for me to um, sign, I think, a publishing deal with, uh, I think, Life or Death PR. And at this time, like, Life or Death PR had, like, Tyler, the Creator, mm. like, Earl Sweatshirt. This is, like, early 2013, 2014 what? time. What like, right after thing? I dropped Die Winning. And I think around this time, I was about to uh, potentially sign with them, and they had a meeting with me. Now, my, my, I think my current management at that time picked up the phone, and they had the meeting for me, but I missed the meeting, Ina, because I was sitting down rapping. I was sitting writing raps. I wasn't. They was like, where were you at? I was writing that. And then it just, I don't know what happened in the meeting, but it soured. 
And I feel like, I was like, dang, I feel like that was one of my first, like, big, like, letdowns. I feel like I fumbled there. Mm-hmm. And um, and for me to even move into, I went through depression. You know, uh, before I, I left for Atlanta, I was a part of a big collective. And a collective just went sour and just went mm-hmm. left. And it was just like, you know, like family and friends and business and all of those things, you know what I'm saying, just, just went left. You know what I'm saying? That happens in life. And I just had to deal with that the hard way. And that was one of the first few times I was just really standing by myself. Mm-hmm. Because... Even as a young artist, as a young artist, young artists have a chip on their shoulder. They feel like, you know, everybody's seeing them and they want them to see them break a break through that, you know, that glass ceiling. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, you know, I was one of those young artists that definitely they wanted to see break through the glass ceiling. So when time goes on and a young artist loses that young and they just an the artist, people start being like, yo, do they still got it? Are they mm-hmm. still got that? And people start feeling mm-hmm. like, dang, like, I mean, you, and that's such a mental turmoil. So I always applaud myself because I've been around here like 10 years strong Mm -hmm. and when people say my name they're not tired of me it's not a boring it's not a boring it's not a uh he still it's nothing like that or it's not it's not too seasoned to where it's like spoiled Mm -hmm. so i say that's i've taken a lot of pride in my craft and always working to get better always working to keep working out stay luxurious i take a lot of pride and i talk a lot of cash because People weren't listening. Like, mm-hmm. people weren't listening. And, I, and I'm, I'm not talking cash just to be fake, but I'm talking cash to be like, no, I put in the 10,000 hour okay. and I'm going to talk that shit and I can back it up. <laughs> like I said, I look better, I move better, I do all this shit because I put in the work. Mm-hmm. I, I learned that from, you know, me being a big wrestling fan. You know, I'm a big fan of The Rock. Are I'm a big you? fan of Stone Cold. So, like, okay. yeah, you know, and like, you know, they talk that cash money if you smell what I'm cooking, but you know what's coming mm-hmm. with an ass whooping. For wow. real. Yes. So, that's just, how, that's just how I am. Now, you mentioned depression. Um, when you were going through the depression, could you still be creative during that time? Did it bring it out more? Did it kind of bring it in? Definitely. That's where I found I was truly, that this is where I'm truly supposed to be in. Because um, I'm one of those type of people, I can create in anything. I only choose not to create because I want to create when I can push the mode. But I can always create. And what the moment I found out like I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this was when I moved to Atlanta, I didn't have, like, a team. I was by myself. I didn't have, like, any... I used to have graphic designers, videographers, the whole, like, nine. So at that point, I was by myself, not even anybody making beats. So when I started, I downloaded the app off my phone, and I started making beats off the app. Mm. And I wrote some of the best records I've ever written. And I, I sent it, and when I went back to Memphis, uh, I connected back with um, Unapologetics, I Make Mad Beats, and brought them these beats. And they was like, oh, this is dope. And they re-enhanced them, brought them back mm-hmm. to life, to, and, I, and I laid records. Mm-hmm. And once I found out, like, if I could just sit there and, and press a couple, I'm not a beat maker, and do this, and create phenomenal songs, bro, I'm <laughs> meant to do this. Like MacGyver, like, you can't you can't <laughs> stop that. So it's like, I'm, I'm meant to do this. Like, even at my worst, at my... At my worst, I wish I can give y'all my brand. At my worst, I can create. Mm-hmm. At my best, I can create. I'm, I'm supposed to be, I'm a creative. It's not going to stop. I already know that yeah. about you. Can you give me a little flow? Of course. I mean, can I, I wish I had a beat. Um, I... Eat is not about to keep that. <laughs> is it? Okay. Um, yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you something new. I ain't done this one in a second. Give me no. Give me that no-no. Give okay. me that no-no. All right. Um... Wish I could be three people at once, uh, cause one ain't enough. Rack my brain, cause the Lord can keep me tough. Wish I could stop blaming me so much, yeah. Being human enough, we all got problems, we all going through some, Hey, Wish I could say sorry when I ain't there, like I ain't care. And cash is the only thing that money I can't spend, uh. Been a couple days loafing, yeah. I'ma keep it Frank Ocean, uh. I don't need your history, I don't want your condolence, ay. I just need my moment. I just want to make the fan proud. Tell my children I did that or without that round. If I could be three folks, I wouldn't be sad now. But who the hell wants to hear tears from a sad clown? Mm. Wish I could be three people at once, huh? Cause one ain't enough. I need one working when the other one choked up. Uh, wish I could stop blaming me so much. Uh, being human enough, but it's a two-way street when we talking about trust. Mm. Yes, I love it. Thank you. I thank love you. it. Thank so that's y'all. that Nunu right there. Oh, that's that Nunu. That's get that his mind right. his flowers, please. Yeah. Get his mind his flowers. Because he's going to take them, okay? I'm taking them, I'm taking them. <laughs> All right, Pro, we are going to bring this pod to a close. Before I, before we go, I want you to let the verbally effective audience know, what do you want them to remember about Pro when you are no longer here? What do you want these people to remember about you? When I'm no longer here, remember not only for yourself, but remember what I stood for as, as myself. As myself, Always be about it, about it, even when they doubt it. 
and I'm I make music for people who are about it, about it. And when I'm gone, I want you to realize that you are capable of anything you can put your mind to and erase the fact you're just nobody's more talented than you, nobody's better than you. We all got the same time. I'm not better than nobody. I'm just willing to put in the time to mm. do it. And that's what makes me different. And that's what makes you stand out. Be about it, about it when everybody doubt it. Just remember that. I love it. Now, how can everybody get in touch with you and follow your journey? online and on social media type my name in on google i got everything (laughs) i got everything p-r-e-a-u-x-x i'm on instagram i'm on tiktok i'm on facebook i'm on spotify i'm on apple music i'm on triller i'm on uh i'm on uh what's the other one with a t uh twitch everything just type in p-r-e-a-u-x-x some of them just as pro main but if you type in my name it'll pop up for the rest <laughs> but follow me on ig follow me on twitter I, I stay with all the shenanigans on those social medias if you want to see me being raw on twitter and instagram but yeah wow it's amazing to sit down and listen to your journey i've learned so much more about you today pro i'm so proud of you you Thank have you. totally evolved i remember like you know we talked about this at the um wyxr interview mm-hmm. When I first saw you perform at one of K97 Next Big Things, oh, I yeah. knew you had it then. Yeah. That was like over a decade ago, maybe. Yeah, it was about, maybe about, about to be. A, it's about, about a decade. Yeah, it's about to be. And you were so different from everyone else. Like, you just gave that advice to these people mm-hmm. to be yourself, be original, mm-hmm. do your thing. That's what you was doing then, and you're doing it now. Yeah. I am so proud Thank of you, you, Pro. And Thank you have you. an amazing team as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know... I, the sky's the limit. Like, I'm just watching the show. If you need my help with anything, let me know. I'll see, receive. Let know, me you, know. You family. Yeah, you know me. You know me. You getting all the exclusives. Next exclusive, I got yes. I got you. I got you. I would appreciate it. But it. thank you so much for joining me today on the Verbally Effective Podcast. No you doubt. are amazing pro. Happy to be here. Yes. And thank you guys for tuning in to yet another episode of the Verbally Effective Podcast. As you can see, my boy amazing artist, amazing entertainer. He is indeed verbally effective, right? Make sure you follow him and support his journey. And thanks so much for tuning in to yet another episode. Big shout out to the Consortium MMT for allowing us to record in this amazing studio. Thank you guys so much for tuning in once again to the Verbally Effective Podcast.